All right, guys, welcome to Philo Films. This is the walkthrough for Carowinds in North and South Carolina. This is the main entrance. Uh, I took a special interest in this due to the fact that the roller coaster you see going over the top there, I love how the coaster cars are actually tilted towards you, kind of like a greeting and a flyby of the roller coaster. That's the uh, Fury 325. You can see the uh, lift hill and the drop there in the distance. Just beautiful uh, sight picture there. Same with the Timinator there to the left. Uh, two of the tallest coasters in the park. And as you uh, walk up here, you're just greeted by some theming. You enter the front and then pass security. Another shot of the Fury 325 there in the distance. And a perfect opportunity for a Carowinds picture op. Tickets to the left. And as you go along here, you'll, you'll be greeted with this center portion of the main entrance. And the Carowin sign, like I said, perfect opportunity to take pictures with the family, create those memories uh, while you're visiting the park. You have the two flags up there to North and South Carolina. I uh, got another shot there of the Fury 325, man. It's just, uh, it's amazing to see the structures. They have the exit signs and you have two entrances actually to the park since the park sits on both South and North Carolina. You'll see that there's a South Carolina entrance and a North Carolina entrance, but both times that we have been here, there uh, there's only been one side open. Uh, we usually came before the park even was open. So going through, uh, guest services to the left, I did not get to show that, but there's two lines here on the ground. Uh, dark blue for South Carolina, light blue, that North Carolina blue there. Um, it's actually where the two states meet. There's a couple shops here on the main strip, like a Cinnab Cinnabon. Uh, you see the uh, Sky Tower there. That will uh, show you good sight lines. As you walk down more Main Street, you'll see a stage there that for performances. Um, we're going to take a right here. And we're going to head over towards the area that houses the Fury 325. And um, you're going to see more shops, more... Um, you know, places to buy merchandise and food and uh, whatnot. You can see the slingshot peeking up there in the skyline. All right, buddy. But as you walk down through here, you'll see there's a couple shops that aren't quite open yet. Um, some of them might not be open uh, until later when the park is actually officially open open. Uh, there's a beer stand there. I guess they serve alcohol. I didn't really pay attention to that. Uh, I was going to save like the whole food and eating for another video. And here you walk over to like an overhang, like a little vegetation overhang. You see the vegetation growing up. They usually have it uh, decorated up there with some decorations. Uh, those flags, the first time we were there, weren't hanging up there. Uh, there was something else, but I can't quite remember. And there's crowds here because they open the park in sections. So this park here is this part of the park is not open yet. This section isn't open as you see people crowding up. So we're gonna go ahead and jump forward on where this section of the park is open up and we're gonna show you what kind of rides to expect in that area and what kind of attractions are in that area. So as the park is open, this area is open. There's some more shops there. I think it's a pizza shop there to the right. You have your carousel to the left or merry-go-round, whichever you prefer to call it. Yep, Papa Luigi, Luigi, uh, Luigi's, I think it was. And then you have your Carowin Theater, which is to the right there. There's another shot of the, the merry-go-round. Uh, the Carowinds Theater. There was a show that day that we were there, but it was uh, the first show wasn't till three. I think it was a, magi a magician. I have not been in that building, so I can't really attest to what is uh, what the what all they do in there. I just know that the, there's a magician there that day, and it, this year's uh, Carowinds uh, 50th year anniversary as well. As you walk up here. Uh, you'll see a couple uh, like 
games you'll find, you know, the pay-to-play games, uh, the Wild Mouse. Here's another shot of the carousel. I think they call it the uh, Grand Carousel. It's a pretty nice one. The kids enjoy it. Uh, good for the kids and the family. You put your little ones on there. They get the ride on the merry-go-round. Another picture of the Wild Mouse that they have here. It's called the Ricochet. I have not got to ride it, so I do not have an opinion on that ride yet. But uh, it looks like your your typical uh, wild mouse ride. Uh, there is usually a line for it, though, so it must be uh, pretty decent. There's uh, your basketball, uh, like pay uh, play, you know, carnival game style thing. So you go over to the right here. There's another flat carnival ride there. To the left, uh, you can see the uh, first drop in the lift for uh, the hurler. That's a wooden roller coaster here at Carowinds. It is uh, rough to say the least. It's probably one of my least favorite rides at Carowinds just because it, it leaves you beat up. I, I rode it in the front. I rode it in the back. And I just can't find a good ride on that. I've rode it in the middle too. Another uh, carnival type game there. You'll see... And there's a Thrills shop. Um, they sell, like, i seen them selling electric bikes in there and all kinds of, like, Thrill stuff. Uh, there's a diner there. The Jukebox Diner has old classic cars out front of it. It's pretty nice. There's another picture of the Thrill shop. You see the electric bike there, chilling. A couple hats and stuff. And here is uh, probably my favorite ride of the whole park. The Fury 325. It is a giga coaster. It does sit up 325 feet, and hence the name Fury 325. Uh, it uses clamshell restraints, and it's a, a B&M giga coaster. Very nice. Probably the probably my favorite ride, and in my opinion, the best ride at Carowinds. You see that lift hill? It's just magnificent the, the you know the lands of Carowinds is pretty flat the park walking around the park is pretty flat you don't have a lot of hills or as you'll see in the Dollywood video when I do that um, I did get a couple rides on that today uh, I do had a POV of the ride uh, up on my channel at daytime and I have a POV of nighttime although it's not a front row seat because at that time of the day I could not get the front row seat for the nighttime ride but I will upload that when I get the chance. There's test seats out in front of most of these rides, so you can see if you can properly fit. I am a little bit of a bigger guy. Uh, the first time I was here, I had to wait for somebody who could actually properly put me in the seat and staple me to the seat. Uh, I, did, I lost some weight, though, and uh, this time around, I rode no problems. Uh, first go, you know, they put the restraints down for you because... I noticed that Carowinds likes to put the restraints down for you on most rides, especially the hyper rides like that, the high thrill rides. They just want, you know, they, they really put a lot of emphasis in this park about safety and the dedication to safety is pretty key here. As we pass some of these classic cars here in front of the Jude Box Diner, I have not got to eat here. Um, usually this area is where we're at the first chance we get in the park. So... Air, uh, diners like that and restaurants aren't usually open by the time we get over there. So if anybody uh, knows how the food quality is in there, let me know. Put it in, leave it in the comments. There's the Coca-Cola. That's a fountain drink area where you can fill your cubs, your souvenir cups, and um, get drinks, stay hydrated in the park, especially on these warm days. Here's the hurler. Like I said, it's a uh, wooden roller coaster. It's been here for some time. Uh, I think it could benefit from like an RMC treatment or taking out and put a new ride there. It's just, it's it's earned its reputation and its name, uh, the hurler, because I, mean, I don't know, when I have rode that thing, I felt like I was going to puke afterwards. And like I said, I felt like I needed a chiropractor after riding it. So I recommend that if you don't get a chance to ride this ride when you're here, um, don't don't be upset. It's, it's not that great. It's... Still a coaster, though, and I had to ride it. But the age has definitely got to it. As we go over to the right here, you're going to see um, their one and only 
drop tower in the park. It is, uh, it's a little bit of a unique drop tower at that. It's a uh, scream zone drop tower, scream zone. Uh, four separate uh, sections of the drop tower go up, so it's not all one platform like you see on most drop towers. I think it's like two or four seats on each side and four sides, and they go up individually and come down. So I guess it's nice when you don't have a full train or a full uh, capacity. You can run one or two at a time or however many you need. You don't have to run all of them at the same time. Um, from my assuming, you know, my assumption from watching it, I think I'm going to turn around here and actually get you guys a, another look at that drop tower, the drop zone. They were testing it at the time. Like I said, the park just opened up. Yep, there's, so they're all up there. And then they're going to come down and drop. It's not the tallest drop tower either. It's just a little thrill. Uh, the theming in that section could probably use a little work. Uh, you got the Fury 325, which stands out like a thumb compared to the Hurler and a drop zone over there. This is the Carolina Cyclone. This is an Aero Looper. Um, not one of their bigger ones. It's If you've been to Dollywood, it's similar to uh, Tennessee Tornado, even though Tennessee Tornado is absolutely trumps this ride. This ride could be a little rough. I got a ride in the first row, and I took a ride in the last row, and it, there's a little bit of head banging. It's showing its age. It's got a beautiful color scheme and layout with that Carolina blue and that white, uh, but there's nothing special about it. It, uh, you know, you start up a little sl small lift hill and then you come down and you hit the first vertical loop and then the second vertical loop and go around to like, a, I believe a corkscrew. And then before you know it, the ride is actually over. So, but nevertheless, it still stands out as a beautiful looking ride. Um, like I said, good for the kiddos that are tall enough but as you see this train's hitting this first loop and immediately after you hit the first loop you hit another loop and that's probably the highlight of the ride and then you go over the walkways which I love when roller coasters go through the walkways and over the walkways like that and a corkscrew and then boom you're done not much not much else to say about that Carolina Cyclone as we watch here there's a big giant beach chair this is kind of like the Boardwalk slash like carnival car, uh, um, area. To the left here is the ricochet. Like I said, I did not get the ride this ride on my visit here. Um, I know my kids, some of my kids did the last time we were here. They didn't have much to say about it. They weren't bugging to ride it. So I do see that there's usually a line there though occasionally for it. Um, and yeah, it's your typical wild mouse, but I wanted to get some, you know, footage of it. I might do a top 10 and top five, uh, ride list for Carowinds, give you guys a little bit of an idea of what rides you probably should push forward to. And there's more carnival like type, um, games here that you pay to play uh i don't play them often i did when i was there i played a little football one i sucked at it but these uh these games they never seem like they're meant to be won um to have a little interaction there with the uh the ride uh, or the the game attendant there's a good picture of the skyline the sun of the slingshot and in the back there that bnm roller coaster is the Vortex. That's a, their stand-up coaster there at Carowinds, which was not running that day. They had a sign saying it was going to be open later this summer. Um, we might go there later. So you go back here towards that uh, boardwalky kind of beach area, and you'll see there's a Sweet Frog, a um, couple more other like boardwalk fries, uh, the boathouse. It's like a little marina boathouse type uh, theming. Theming here is really great, even for their food. They've gone above and beyond. We did eat the chickie and peets. I got a chicken steak uh, sub. I think the other the others got uh, regular steak cheese steak subs. Uh, they had crab fries, seasoned crab fries. They're pretty good. Uh, 
definitely, you know, for a theme park, the food was good. The prices, we had the meal plans. Uh, I recommend that if you're going to eat in a park all day, just to dish out the $31, $32 for a regular all-you-can-eat or all-day meal plan. You can eat every 90 minutes. We got the premium meal plans. It comes with a drink wristband because we have the cups. We didn't have the season cups, but this right over here is the uh, Carolina Gold Rusher. Uh, it's a uh, mine train car or a mine train ride. It's uh, pretty nice, so we got to ride that later in the day. I have some uh, POV footage of that that I'll be uploading at a uh, later date. And the uh, we're entering the area of the county fair. As you can see to the left there, there is, you can't make it out right now, but there is a, um, I guess you'd be, a uh, shuttle boomerang ride uh, flying cobras. It, you, you start the ride out going forward. You go through a little cobra type, bat wing type roll, and then a loop. And then you do the whole layout of the uh, ride in reverse as you go up the uh, the next lift hill. But you do it in reverse backwards. I rode this. Uh, I've definitely been on quite a few uh, boomerang coasters. Uh, this one has been one of the better ones of the ones I've been on. It's not real rough. It's kind of just like, a, you know, the pacing's all right. It's kind of just one of the nice boomerang rides you know every park seems to have some type of boomerang coaster uh of some sorts or shuttle coaster um just a you know just just a good experience if you just want to ride it like if the lines aren't long just hop on there and get a catch a ride on the boomerang uh i think that boomerangs are overdone anymore um Ever since I've rode to Sidewinder at Hershey Park in Pennsylvania, uh, used to be one of my favorites, and it's just, uh, you know, boomerangs are kind of a thing of the past. You walk over here, you'll see that they have fair fries and more carnival type rides. So basically, the layout of your county fair type. Deal. You got the Dozy -si Doe there to the left, which is that red and white ride. Um, you have another ride over here. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, Electric Spin. Electric Spin is what it is. Um, the kids rode that later in the day. Uh, it's just your basic flat rides you're going to catch at your carnivals and your fairs. Uh, nothing very spectacular about them. They're they're good for a nice little quick ride if you need a break from running coasters. There's a good picture and layout of the flying cobras there. You see the train is starting its first lap through uh, in its forward position. It's backing up the lift hill. It's going to release, come down, do that cobra roll to the loop, back up, and then do it in reverse. Uh, the big tall ride in front of me, it's the tower standing out there. Uh, I'll get to that in a second, but yeah, see the cobra roll, your loop, and then up the hill. Yeah, you got some swinging rides here. You got another drink stand. Basically, typical, you know, amenities you'll find as you go through. There's a restaurant here called the County Kitchen. It sells like rotisserie chicken and mashed potatoes and stuff like that um to the right there is the water park entrance uh we did not go into the water park that day uh, we don't do a lot of water parks uh, i would like to get back though and eventually check it out for the kids there's the wind seeker up there it's a swing ride slash like tower swing ride i got some pov up on my channel with that you get great views of the carolinas and the whole park of carowinds as a whole which is really nice got a general store there the country kitchen again and to the right here there's a stand that sells turkey legs called blue ridge i didn't get a turkey leg that day usually when i go out to parks like this and they sell smoked turkey legs i have to get one it's like one of my like rituals i didn't get one that day um we kind of focused on what places honored the meal plans because not every place in here 
will honor your dining plan. So you have to look outside and see if they have that they accept the meal plans. But if you walk over here to the right, you're going to see a coaster sitting here. This is a pretty, I would say it's not really intense. The layout's tight and small. It doesn't go really high, though. It's called the Copperhead Strike. It has a couple launches, but it's a Mac Rides launches. And anybody who knows anything about Mac Ride launches know that their launches aren't very fast. Uh, I don't know if that was by design. I'm assuming as I rode this ride, and I have POV of that up on the channel as well, I feel like it, the launches were intentional. Because you get such hang time. See, as you see the train car slow down and kind of just hang there in the loops. And I feel like Mac Rides had that an intentional slow launch that every time you hit a launch and you hit an inversion after the launch, you go slow through the loops and you have such – it feels almost like you're, you're going to come to a stop at the top of the loop. I, I enjoy that as much as I love launches. Um – I love fast launches, but this kind of does its own thing. It kind of breaks the mold. It lets you go out, experience these loops, and just the, the tight layout of the ride. Definitely, I would say, probably top five ride at Carowinds for sure. And then you walk over here to this area, and you're going to enter what the area is called Air Nautica. If I said that right, I believe I said that right. It is... A ride area that's themed almost like aviation you'll see a lot of aviation themed rides over in this area minus the hover and dodge bumper cars which we did ride which are fun they're a pretty good set of bumper cars most of your rides over in this area are gonna be aviation themed type of rides and uh, it's a pretty cool layout I believe it's their newest themed area in the Carowinds Park uh, you'll see the engine spin ride over there, like kind of like uh, old plane propeller like engines. And uh, get a sign here, uh, picture or the uh, you have footage of the aeronautica um, up that way. We'll get to eventually, but I just wanted to get a little, you know, view of the area. Do a little spin around, check the area. I love uh, when you hit different sections of the parks. You get to go in there and you see how they have the lands laid out. And you're going to see that a lot in my Dollywood video. But uh, we're going to keep this focus towards Carowinds today. Um, little ride over to the side here called the Wind Star. We did ride this one. It's like a hang glider type deal where you hit, you have a little bar in front of you and you push up and then it goes up and then pull when it goes down. There's a little prop plane there. And this B&M inverted coaster here is called Afterburn. Uh, the line wasn't very long now. Granted, we did have fast lane passes today. It was Father's Day on this day. And I feel like with the fast lane passes, it did save us a lot of time through the day. We got to, you know, we didn't feel rushed, but we didn't really need it. The park wasn't really packed as I thought. You know, I saw a lot of reviews saying that Carowinds is packed on holidays and Father's Day they'll be packed. Um, you know, this is people who actually visit the park, not the park itself. So we bought the fast lane passes and, you know, it was nice that we got to get on. It was walk-ons all day long, but uh, I don't think you really need it. I don't think uh, I'm, I'm going to do a review of the fast lane uh, passes and uh, whether they're worth your money or not. I absolutely don't think they were worth it. I thought it was a good um, investment for me being able to get up to the front, you know, and get your POV footage of these rides. Uh, there's the Airwalker. Technically, that ride's considered a roller coaster because it's on rails. I don't consider them roller coasters. I think your roller coasters are more of your traditional, you know, roller coasters. But we walk up here to look at the afterburn. A little pop jet hanging off the actual supports of the ride, which is pretty cool. Uh, they got a little themed hangar type deal there for the uh, the afterburn. And I did not get to get POV footage of that. 
but I do have footage on the ride. Here is their one and only dark ride, the Boo Blasters. Um, and then we walk around this area here, and we're going to be entering the kitty area of the park called Camp Snoopy. Uh, Carowinds and Cedar Fair Parks used to be owned by Paramount. A lot of their old rides used to be Paramount movie themed, and when uh, Cedar Fair got the uh, the parks, Carowinds and Cedar Point and whatnot, they uh, their kitty area end up being relied on as Camp Snoopy, Snoopy themed rides and theming. A uh, good place for the kitties. A lot of kitty rides over here. A lot of things. If you have small children. You get to come over here and uh, check out their uh, their rides for the kids. Uh, a lot of rides over here to keep them amused, uh, keep them entertained. Um, a lot of flat rides, a, lot of, a couple of thrill rides. Uh, I did get the ride the Woodstock Express over here. The Woodstock Express is a little family wooden coaster. And actually wasn't bad. The pacing for the roller coaster wasn't bad. And it was just a nice little wooden roller coaster for the family. Nothing real high. Doesn't go uh, doesn't go very fast, like 30 miles per hour maybe at its top speed. And it uh, doesn't go very tall. Uh, of course, it's a wooden roller coaster, no inversions. Um, used to be a time where you say, hey, wooden roller coasters don't have inversions at all. But uh, you see a lot of companies now, especially like RMC, that are turning wooden roller coasters into hybrid or like outlaw run at Silver Dollar City that has inversions in it and it's a wooden but it's a top it has a topper track on it, which is really weird to see, but anyways, I'm getting off topic here. You got Camp Snoopy here, great for kids. Uh perfect uh for your little ones that they can ride because Carowinds has quite the height restriction requirements for a lot of rides. A lot of rides that my kids my older boys could ride at like say Dollywood. They can't ride in this in this park. Um, it's not the end all be all, but definitely keep that in mind for you to have kids. Uh, here is the lift and the first drop for the B&M Hyper Coaster um, Intimidator. Intimidator over at uh, not to be confused with the Intimidator 305, which is over at King's Dominion. This is not quite as tall uh the little bit more milder than the intimidator 305 same name themed after dale and Hart, but a uh, great ride i didn't get a whole lot of footage in camp snoopy because we kind of were focused on giving the kids right their chance to ride but uh we're gonna leave camp snoopy here and head over towards where the kitty hawk is and where the night hawk is and there's also a like a dinner hall over here where you can go and eat we went in there and ate they have anything from cheeseburgers to barbecue uh we got ribs and brisket for lunch and pizza they have italian themed food in there uh some of the boys got brisket uh i got ribs they were okay um i do a lot of smoked meat myself and I just felt like they were they were definitely made at an amusement park that's what they felt like not terrible food uh just you know for the barbecue why I'd probably would pick something else like a cheeseburger or something next time uh you see the kitty hawk running there in the background definitely a nice place to check out if you got it they do accept the the deal the uh, the meal plan so I'd definitely go over there and check that out that blue and yellow coaster there is the Nighthawk. It is a Flying Dutchman ride. It is one of the remaining few Flying Dutchman rides that are out there today. It is definitely a different experience for laying down. Uh, I do have POV of that up too. If you want to see that, go check that out. I'll put a little uh, card up here. You guys can click on it and go right to that video. It's definitely different. You feel... Uh, a sense of weightlessness in the flying coaster definitely not the best flying coaster i've been on but uh it the train cars are unique though because they lay back in the station so you sit up in a sitting right permit uh position and then the cars train cars come fall backwards or come down backwards and you're laying on your back when you start the ride instead of laying on your stomach different type of ride but uh definitely uh 
worth a check out. It is rough. It is. Uh, I heard that it used to be smoother. Uh, I got to ride this towards the end of the day. Um, evening dinner time hours. And you think maybe, you know, coasters, they get nice little laps during the day. They get to warm up a little bit and they'll run a little smoother. That was not the case with this. Now, we had a family friend with us, uh, Bella. She rode it and she and she absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, the sensation of flying and, and being able to look around is great. I just, uh, I don't think that it's going to be one of my top, like, rides out of all the parks that I've rode in. And especially of that style, I still think the Superman flight rides, uh, flying coasters, are still better. And I have to get back to Six Flags Georgia to ride the Superman ride down there. But like I said, not a terrible ride. Uh, I don't think I would be upset if I made it to the park and didn't get a ride on it. Just because the fact that it is rough. It's a little rough. Uh, I did have, notice a little bit of head banging. But uh, the Kitty Hawk over there is a little version of a roller coaster. It has nothing to do with this roller coaster at all. doesn't look similar. Uh, just an inverted. It's not very thrilling. It's kind of low-key boring. My kids wrote it and was like, this is boring. Uh, they're used to the uh, Dragon Flyers inverted family coaster at Dollywood. So this one's a little has leaves a little bit to be desired for the kiddos. But it's a nice, mild uh for adults boring kitty ride to ride and get the kids introduced to uh roller coasters over here is the wind seeker which i do got a pov of that too as well and that takes you up 305 feet i believe it is um is the second tallest attraction i believe at the park next to fury and as we come to a close on the park here, we're going to walk over and look at the intimidated area. They had a lot of these uh, ton, um, tents up today. I don't know if it was because CoasterCon was coming to the area uh, after they were at Dollywood this weekend that we were here. So I don't know if they were coming here next. And that's about it for the park. Uh, there, the walkway to the left takes you back around to the front center area and then there's the intimidator there in all its glory so that was uh my walk through and my information on carowinds and what to expect when you come to visit carowinds it's a nice park uh cedar fairs knocked it out of the park with this park and uh we will see you guys in the next video and the next video should be dollywood I just want to take a moment to thank you guys for sticking by me here in this 32-minute adventure, almost 33-minute adventure of Carowinds. So if you guys want more information or more videos like this, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe. It helps me out, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.